Michigan has a close paranormal community with lots of historical locations, and in each location's history lies its own ghost story. This is Michigan Hauntings. I'm Jason Schrock, and this is Michigan Hauntings. On this episode, we will be following the Motor City Ghost Hunters as they investigate the Lauren Andrews House in Washington Township. Let's take a quick tour. Hi, I'm Jan Donovan, and welcome to the Octagon House. Uh, I have been here for about 15 years as a volunteer, and I am now uh, the reigning president. The house was built in 1860 by Lauren Andrus, who was a farmer, and at the time when he built the house, he had over 370 acres here. We now only have about four and a half acres. It's octagon shape, and it was of the time, it was something that everybody was getting into because it was considered a house of eight sides, and it was a functional house. Um, the walls in the basement are 36 inches thick. The walls on the first floor are 18 or 24, and second floor are 18. We have 55 steps to get you to the cupola, and um, the upstairs cupola was used mainly for just viewing the area. It had no other um, actual use other than to visualize the, the, the grounds. We use this for an educational area. Um, we have a lot of tools. We have a history of the house when it was Wayne State here with some of the artifacts that period. Um, every farmer during this period would have had a fruit cellar or a vegetable cellar. They would have stored all of their uh, produce that they would have re um, reaped during the growing season. This is just an example of what they might have had for storage. Of course, theirs would have been much more adequate because they were supplying themselves for a whole winter. Uh, over on this side, during the time um, when Apple Barrel Farms was here, this is a vignette that tells about the story of Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton when they had purchased the house and they had hoped that it would be run as a historical home. They literally lived in the house, the period. Unfortunately, they went bankrupt and at that time we came in behind them and to save the house so it was going to be destroyed. And as a nonprofit organization, we came in and we purchased the house and we were called Save the Octagon House. Once we paid off our loan, then it became Friends of the Octagon House. And we are a nonprofit organization. Everyone who is here is not paid. We do not have a single paid person. Everybody has volunteered here. The stairs are 55 steps to get you all the way to the cupola. As you walk through the house, you'll find that there are no um, hallways and you go from room to room. This probably would have been a bedroom, um, probably mom and dad's bedroom. And you see we have small rooms, which probably would have been for smaller children. They did have eight children in the house. Because of the number of children that they had in the house, they would have doubled up their, the children would have been staying with other children. You might have had two or three beds in this one room for the children. Same goes for the other room that we're gonna be going into. We have this room set up as a library. Mr. Anders might have been in here looking over his property, surveying his 350-some acres. Um, this would have probably have also been a bedroom for the children at the time. These are the back stairs that are connected to the downstairs. The children would have probably used these stairs rather than the nice spiral stairs to come up and down the stairway. They're very small, so it's mainly for children. We have this room designated as a fiber room. Uh, mainly because we have a lot of uh, textiles in here. We have an older sewing machine, uh, several different types of spinning wheels. Um, we have quite a collection of quilts that go from the 1930s up to present time. Um, during the summertime, we actually have a lady who comes and weaves on the weekends, and she will weave some of these nice uh, items for us. Let's join the Motor City Ghost Hunters. Team one in the basement. We're down in the basement, the cellar area. K2 just went off. K2 just went off. It's 62 degrees. We are. Uh, it's 57 outside, mostly cloudy. Everybody say their name. My name is Tim T3. I'm Kelly. Gail. Sharon. We're the Motor City Ghost Hunters. Do an EVP session. No, why did you just do that? Why did I just do this? Yeah. Just to let everybody know and the recorders know, each one of us have a recorder to record through. 
and we want to make sure that each of us, when we go home and re-listen to our recorders, that uh, we know what time and date, time stamped it, weather stamped it, so we can tell the difference if there's different weather outside that if it, if it causes some paranormal. What are you doing, Sharon? I'm just in my flashlight, so we can try and get a response by asking questions. If someone's here with us, they can respond by um, moving, um, turning on and off the flashlight. Just talking to some of this equipment that we have here. You may not know what it is, but the little lights will let us know that your energy is present. We also have recorders that you can speak into. But preferably, we'd like for you to speak to us. Or show yourself. Can you do that for us, please? Flashlight response in the corner over here on that question. Thank you for that. Another flashlight. Two flashlight responses. Can you tell us uh, your name and our recorders? It's, I feel a draft on my arms. Any family members that... What was that? Was that a light that dimmed? Did you, Did see, you that? see that too? I like, saw that. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was because there's no flashlight that way. Yeah, it was almost just like, uh, almost something passed. It was lower. Yeah, exactly. It was at this time when Gail and Kelly saw a light at the end of the hall that a light anomaly appears above their head. Right? Yep. Hey, I kind of caught something on the corner of my eye there. The gospel. Mm -hmm. Or original gospel. Do you like this little device that Tim has that he's using to bring up music? It's kind of neat, huh? That was so crazy when he when we were talking about that first song. And the K2 it music likes that right? song or it doesn't like that song. <laughs> mm -hmm. One or the other. Because they haven't gone off at all in, mm -hmm. except for that. Now Team 2 wanted their chance in a different part of the business. Because yeah, all the stories you read about the Underground Railroad is tunnels leading into the house. and. Right. You know, the Mason Dixon line. You know, I, a grand, third, you know, grandfather that fought in the Civil War, and he was a prisoner at Andersonville. Do you think the children knew what was going on? Like, do you think, do you think mom and dad would keep that from the kids? That they're. I would think they would keep them, keep it quiet. Because you can, yeah, easily say the wrong thing. Kids talk. Watch as Kaz reacts to something hitting him in the stomach. I don't know. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Something just hit me. Apparently, <laughs> yes. Something could just hit you, they said. Did you just throw that at you? <laughs> Kaz got nailed. Nailed in the basement <laughs> of the underside. Something just hit me. Yeah, something just hit me and then dropped and hit my hand. I don't even see. Heather, Kaz, and Jason looked for something that was hard enough to hit Kaz. Uh, all that was there was some plaster, some rocks, um, nothing out of the ordinary, but maybe one of those hit it. Do you have internet, like, on your phone, Jay? Like, if you could, like, yeah. like, like sweet, like, just Google sweet chariot? I just saw a shadow. Behind me? Yeah. There's like a, there's light reflecting off the ground. Okay. And that's where I saw it. I'm starting to get Because I have oh, yeah. yes. I was just going to say, I'll right here. Right. Did someone just say something? Mm, no, mm -hmm. I thought it was them up there. <laughs> apparently they did <laughs> say apparently something. I heard something come from over there. Almost, it sounded like a, a, like a male voice said, let's go. Oh. Almost like a whisper. Hmm. I got I'm, chills just I'm, running through me right now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Someone just touched me. I'm sorry. Okay, well, bring, bring your chair over here. Okay, well, 
You're only allowed to touch us if we give you permission. Ashley did not give you permission. We appreciate the enthusiasm. You okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you can say you're sorry from over there. You really startled her. I know you didn't mean to. There's a gentleman upstairs. His name's Tim. Could you whisper in Tim's ear? And tell him hi? No, don't scream. You're not allowed to touch Ashley unless if she's not giving you permission. That's the second time. I'm going to have to ask you to stop. Ashley's here with me. It's my guest. She's under my protection. Okay, we'll get up and stand up. And you, and you tell them to stop. Ashley's very nice, she's very friendly, but you're not allowed to, to touch people or, yeah, Give me three lights up. Oh, oh, be careful. Standing up against the wall and felt something touch towards my face, so I moved closer to Heather felt like maybe a finger or two go across the face a couple times, just kind of let it go. And then felt a whole hand physically go across my face a couple different times and that was enough for me. <laughs> Team 1 investigates upstairs in, they call it the doll room. Uh, they heard some noises in that room earlier um, and decided that was a good place to stake it out. Can you sit on that couch for me so I can take a picture of you? Something? Right there. Kelly? Yeah. Right to your right, the uh, orb just went right. Do you feel anything? That's where the bump was when I was downstairs. My arm was right there. I heard it. Twice. <clears throat> did you get them? Did you take a picture? I didn't get up. I, I, I saw it over here move, mm -hmm. and I took a picture, but it didn't show up on my desk, so I just went back and looked. But it was right there to your right, and then again. Can you? I appreciate you at trying to show yourself. Can you do that again for me? I, I didn't, uh, I'm too slow to get a picture, so I want to try it one more time. Could you? Oh, my goodness. Is it there again? Yes. Take a picture? Oh, there it is, right there. Are you taking a picture right now? Yeah. Yes. Good. I don't think it's coming up, though. <clears throat> is it sitting on the couch? Is it by the couch? Here, man, I'm getting chilled right now. Oh, you are sitting on the couch. It came, went right in front of the camera right when it came on that flash. I'm gonna, oh, really? That would be cool if you keep watching it and seeing if every mm -hmm. time that the orb goes by, it's uh, the light, you know, lights up on the flashlight. Move past that light again and turn it off for me, will ya? Right now? Can you turn that flash off? Right. Thank you. Turn it off. You're doing great. We appreciate it. Thank you. I want to take there I went. Just then. That is really weird. I hope that camera is capturing that. You can go sit on the couch now, please. We can actually see well, know that you're sitting there by the lights lighting up on the, that little device I sat on the chair. It's not going to hurt you or anything. It just lets us know that you're actually sitting there, which is pretty cool. Do you want to see the horsey move again? Yeah? Oh, that's <laughs> nice choice now. <laughs> I think you're a little kid playing up here with us. It might be a little kid or maybe an adult that's not used to seeing these cool toys. <laughs> I heard a yes from coming from that room. Which but, one? But it was a female over here. Right. And I'm getting the chills. That was me. Oh, oh, Sorry. The neck. Yep. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll make the horsey move. Ready? Yeah, you like that? 
Wait, they, Do you hear a scream? They, I just heard whoosh, like that. What do you say? Do that again. Move that thing again. Okay, where did it? It wasn't that. Maybe we don't think it was that? No, no I, heard, I heard it was like whoosh. It was either a, a little kid hollering or a, a whisk. Well, the recorder should have picked it up because I heard it too. Oh, maybe it was somebody. Are you trying to communicate with us? Where's your recorder at? Mine's right there. Because it came from over in that area. If you know what a radio is, radios normally play music, but this device plays the frequency that the radio may play at. And you could speak, use the energy of the frequency to speak through this. Was that you making noise in there? Yeah. Okay, hello. Did you hear like a right here? Like, like I heard it. Gail? What? Did you make a noise like a cough or a gurgle? Or a what? dragon? A so cough what? or a gurgle or something? Did I cough or gurgle? Yeah. <laughs> no. Not at all. Did you make it sound like you were dragging something? something? Nope. It was kind of like a... Nope. nope. But yeah. And you could speak, use the energy of the frequency to speak through this. Was that you making noise in there? You didn't turn down the radio yet, right? No. The only thing that I did that sounded weird was this floorboard over here when I walked no, over. No, hon, it was already when you were way past the camera. We uh, couldn't even see you. Nope. But I was getting major chills um, when I walked into this room here and I stood in the doorway here. I didn't get a good feeling. It was weird. Did you pass by Gail in the hallway? Yes. That's that flashlight slide across my gaze, is that what that was? It sounded like oh, something. It right? moved. Hang on a second. It did move, you guys. Okay. Um, what we're about to do is a Frank's box session. Uh, in essence, what a Frank's box is, it's think of it as similar to a broken radio where it's constantly scanning through the channels uh, without ever stopping. <clears throat> the theory behind it is that Spirits can take the energy from the white noise from scanning and communicate back through to us on this side of the veil. Can you give me your name, please? Jay? Is there a message that you have for us here today, Jay? You're not coming through clearly. Okay, I tried to conduct a ghost box session for about another 15 minutes. Very little came through that was audible. I appreciate your time communicating with us and any attempts that you have made tonight. On behalf of the group that I'm with, we thank you for all that you have done. I will be disconnecting in five, four, three, two, one. Goodbye. Got a goodbye. <laughs> Let's take a look at some EVPs that were caught. This was recorded in the basement with Team One. If you listen closely, you can hear some whistling right in here that is not in any of the other recording. This was recorded on the second floor with team one and they were discussing trying to replicate the sound that they heard earlier in the night. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What did you hear that? Now Gail heard it with her own ears. If you listen to right here. Oh. Yeah. What did you hear that? Oh. Yeah. What did you hear that? Sounds like a some kind of noise. Oh. Voice. Yeah. What did you hear that? This was also caught in the upstairs with Team One. Um, 
Let's give it a listen. What is that? So once again, everybody hears it. And it sounds like a child. What is that? It's right here. This is team one again. From the upstairs. Once again, it sounds like a child. I heard it. My would have to be downstairs and do it. Oh, okay. Terrible. Oh, did you hear that? Right here. Downstairs and do it. Oh, okay. Terrible. Oh, did you hear that? The Motor City Ghost Hunters had a great night investigating the Warren Andrews house in Washington Township. They found EVPs and even experienced some paranormal activity. The Lauren Andrews house and Motor City Ghost Hunters will be partnering up this year to hold a few public investigations so you can experience what Motor City Ghost Hunters experienced this night. Please check MotorCityGhostHunters.com and their Facebook page for more information.